Guys, welcome to Snakes and Adders. This is another Snakes and Adders reptile advice, although not really reptile advice, more of a collection of thoughts. After watching something the other day, a panel uh, of keepers prattling on about uh, some things that they found annoying and uh, took umbrage with some things and then got me thinking about things I find annoying. And I think, I suppose, the, the, the thing I want to protect in this video is the right of aspiration and the right to improve or set goals or want to become a better keeper. None of us come out of the box a awesome keeper. And you can do all the reading you like. Practical skill is different to theory. It just is. Some people don't like that idea, but it is. Predominantly it's snakes and adders. Me and Paul deal with uh, novice keepers and children and i was listening to this this video the other day and it just seemed to me that whilst i understand the push for advancement there seems to be this down your nose oh, you're doing it that way are you attitude or dismissive of maybe some of the keepers that are of longer standing within the hobby is Neanderthals, which is equally unfortunate. I know that if the same standards that these lofty aspirations that this video uh, I watched sort of alluded to, I'd have never entered the hobby. My dad had just point blank gone, we're not doing that, Joel. I'm not spending that. You know, you can read your books, but you're not having one of them. No chance. Not if I've got to do X, Y, and Z. And then we've got to have live plants and everything. That's too complex, mate. You're 10. Can't do it. I work full time. I've got no interest in keeping snakes. I know that, that, that it would it would um, short circuit a number of, if not all, of the young families that come in wanting to buy uh, an exotic pet. And I think the thing that maybe these guys forget is that the advancements that are made and the leaps forward in technological advancement whether it's thermostats or uv are done because there is money within this hobby to do that to invest in r d and if you become snobby then you stop the hobby growing if you stop the hobby growing there's no further investment. There's no further investment. There's no R&D. So the very reason that you get to enjoy your advancements is because there's money within this hobby. And we get to invite people in on rung one. And then through natural aspiration and seeing uh, keepers of higher station online, keeping in a certain manner, that people will seek to follow that standard of care this is a good thing um and we mustn't lose sight of aspiration we mustn't lose sight of people building up and one of the comments on the video that got me was like you know well i've been using this that this thermostat for 30 years and the pithy comment that came back was why well, it's the wrong thermostat and you've been doing it wrong for 30 years which is just being an arsehole basically when i think about the things that mechanically make a vivarium correct or that mechanically work mechanically sound there's things that people see as advancements when actual fact they're parallels they're not any different take for example we'll just take one company microclimate had a B1ME and they released the OLED dimmer. Mechanically, for the animal within the enclosure, what is the difference? There isn't one. Day night units have existed in this hobby for 30 years. A good five years longer than some of the people in this video commenting about the efficacy of day night thermostats. A day-night thermostat allows you to modulate between day and night over a 24-hour period. The mechanism used changes. Sometimes it's a mechanical timer. 
um, used in reverse, such as on the old Habistat units, or a Lux meter, such as with the ME on Magic Eye units that used to be out by Microclimate. To release an OLED dimmer, basically, the same job is done digitally. So, there is no Lux meter anymore. But where the Lux meter was a boon and why we enjoyed it is the people of long standing who used the magic eyes would completely remove natural light from their reptile collections rooms and then what they would do was be to erect strip lights that are then connected to a mechanical timer the magic eye units would then look at those lights and with just one change of one mechanical timer we could change the photo period for the entire reptile room you can't do that with an OLED dimmer. So it wasn't about whether, I mean, some people liked it, some people didn't. But when you picked one and you worked with it, then there was a way of being able to do stuff and making it more efficient. And we learned how to get the very best out of the pieces of equipment. So an OLED dimmer and a mechanical timer for the light source within the, the, the enclosure, you can control day and light, night uh, light cycle and day and night heat cycle. With a B1ME, with a light source with a mechanical timer, or a light source with a mechanical timer, I can control photo period and day and night cycle. What was the advancement? It's more convenient. It's maybe a bit more modern. But to the animal inside that viv, there was no change. So don't preach about these you know, you've been using the wrong stat. Your stat does the same job. All right, we maybe had a bit of a slightly more complex version because it was a bit more rudimentary. But the final product inside that viv that controls the animal's enclosure is exactly the same. The only time that there is an advancement, and again, it's through convenience rather than mechanical change, is that they would have a second plug fit in, such as the Habistat Day-Night Digital Dimmer, where you could plug in an ancillary light, which acts as a, re a light controller, which acts as a relay to turn it on and off and control all your photo period. But again, it's just day and night modulation, which is the same as the old MEs or the mechanical day-night units that they had on the market before then. It's only when you get to Evos that you then get the four separate temperature changes or the prime where I believe that there's eight. So, and then we're talking about serious pieces of investment where, again, such as children, teenagers, young adults may not have the disposable income of someone who is, has independent, independent disposable income where they can choose to blow 130 quid on a thermostat to keep up with the Joneses uh, with the hipster beards and vegan shirts and all the rest of it. That That isn't necessarily a question of right or wrong. It's different. And it isn't necessarily for somebody to say, oh, well, you're doing it wrong. Oh, old school. Oh, oh, you're not hip, man. You're not keeping up with it. Exactly what have you advanced? You haven't advanced anything. You can change your temperatures four times, but as far as the lights, they're completely separate to the stats, so they make no difference. The advancements in UV, brilliant, brilliant stuff. And people will catch up. When we, I first took on snakes and adders in 2003, there was Iguana Light uh, or Reptisun 5.0, and they were T12 bulbs, so they were the really fat inch and half jobs. Or there was um, a 2%. Then we transitioned to T8 tubes, and we got an 8% tube. Oh. Then a 10. Then somewhere between 10 and 12, uh, we got a T5 tube, where we could get the 10 or the 12. Then we got uh, high output T5s, and we got up to 14%. It's crazy. Wonderful advancements. Then obviously the Mercury Vapors designed for those larger Z-type enclosures, because obviously they give off heat and light at the same time. So things are moving forward, and I tend to find that the, the UV side of things, people keep pace with, and they upgrade, and they change, and you know, um, and but also the, 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 there's, there's budget constraints, and you know, these manufacturers, you know, do they denounce their own products? Why do they still produce compacts if they don't like them? There's a market for them. There's a market for T8s, market for T5s, market for high output T5s. And people are trying to meet their budget. If we set out that everybody, 
everybody has to have metal halide, external ballast, super dupers, the uh, Evo Pro, also controlling fans and all the rest of it. It has to be bioactive with bugs crawling everywhere because I don't want to clean out the poo of my own lizard. And I'm going to import all the stone and blah, blah, blah. You're going to kill the hobby. There has to be aspiration. There's nothing wrong with wanting that end up here to be super duper modern, extra expensive, super cool, bioactive. But not everybody wants to do it. And that's equally okay as well. And I get, I just, I don't like the little guy getting stamped on it. It irritates me. Um, and particularly the youngsters and stuff because they don't need it. And they're going to be joining the social media circle soon and this disparaging, uh, uh, hipster cool crap I've got no time for no time for and I'll stamp on them instead